This is really a great time for Waldenstrom's macroglobulinemia because we're seeing important advances being made, thanks really to our better understanding of the genome. You know, we have a number of new agents uh, being developed, including the BTK inhibitors, CXCR4 inhibitors, BCL2 inhibitors, all of which are showing great promise for this disease. BTK inhibitors represent really a bright spot in this disease. Uh, these were rationally developed since our discovery of the mid-88 mutation. And, you know, recognizing that this mutation actually drives BTK signaling. So since about 95 to 97 percent of patients carry these mid-88 mutations, this is actually a big deal. And what we've seen from, you know, all the trials that have been done to date is very high rates of activity for BTK inhibitors, regardless of whether we're talking about ibrutinib, zanubrutinib, um, acalabrutinib, tirabrutinib. Even now, the non-covalent pertabrutinib is showing very nice activity in this disease. And so it's an exciting time, and really there remains a number of questions uh, around the use of BTK inhibitors, including when do we use them? How do we sequence them relative to chemoimmunotherapy? How do we optimize their use and with what agents can we combine them? So uh, the future is very bright. We know they work. We know that they have very long, durable uh, responses. And now really um, it's about, you know, where do we place them? How do we use them? And what's the best way to use them?